An Exposition of First Peter, Chapter 4, Verses 14-16, through 16, by Robert Leighton. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. If ye be reproached. If we consider both the nature of the thing and the strain of the scriptures, we shall find that reproaches are amongst the sharpest sort of sufferings, and are indeed fiery trials. The tongue is a fire, says St. James, and reproaches are the fleshes of that fire. They are a subtle kind of flame, like that lightning which, as naturalists say, crushes the bones, and yet breaks not the flesh. They wound not the body, as do torture and whips, but through a whole skin they reach the spirit of a man and cut it. So Psalm 42.10, as with the sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me. The fire of reproaches preys upon and dries up the precious ointment of a good name, to use Solomon's comparison, Ecclesiastes 7.4. A good name is in itself good, a prime outward good, and take us according to our natural temper and apprehensions, according to which we feel things. Most men are, and some excessively, too tender and delicate in it. Although, truly, I take it rather to be a weakness than true greatness of spirit, as many fancy it, to depend much on the opinion of others, and to feel it deeply. Yet, I say, considering that it is commonly thus with men, and that there are the remains of this, as of other frailties in the children of God, it cannot well be but reproaches will ordinarily much afflict men, and to some kind of spirits, possibly, be more grievous than great bodily pain or suffering. And inasmuch as they are thus grievous, the scripture accounts them so, and very usually reckons them amongst sufferings. It is apt to name them more than any other kind of suffering and that with good reason, not only for their piercing nature, but for their frequency and multitude. And some things we suffer do, as flies, more trouble by their number than by their weight. Now, there is no one kind of suffering, of such constancy and commonness and abundance as reproaches are. When other persecutions cease, Yet these continue. When all other fires of martyrdom are put out, these burn still. In all times and places, the malignant world is ready to revile religion. Not only avowed enemies of it, but the greatest part even of those that make a vulgar profession of it. They that outwardly receive the form of religion are yet, many of them, inwardly haters of the power of it, and Christians who are such merely in name, will scorn and reproach those that are Christians indeed. And this is done with such ease by every one, that these arrows fly thick. Every one that hath a tongue can shoot them, even base abjects, Psalm 35.15, and the drunkards make songs, as Jeremiah complains. The meanest sort can reach the point of persecution and be active in it against the children of God. They who cannot or dare not offer them any other injury will not fear nor spare to let fly a taunt or bitter word, so that whereas other sufferings are rarer, these meet them daily. While they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Psalm 52.10 We see, then, how justly reproaches are often mentioned amongst and beyond other trials, and accounted persecution. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, and persecute you, 
and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. In the history of the casting out of Hagar and her son, Genesis 21.9, all we find lead to Ishmael's charge is, Sarah saw him mocking, and as he that was born after the flesh did them, in this manner persecute him that was born after the spirit, Galatians 4.29. Even so it is now. And thus are reproaches mentioned amongst the sufferings of Christ in the gospel, and not as the least. The railings and mockings that were darted at him, and fixed to the cross, are mentioned more than the very nails that fixed him. And so Hebrews 12.2, the shame of the cross, though he was above it and despised it, Yet that shame added much to the burden of it. So verse 3, Consider him who endured the contradiction of sinners. Now the other thing is, that this is the lot of Christians, as it was of Christ. And why should they look for more kindness and better usage, and think to find acclamations and applauses from the world, which so vilified their Lord? Oh, no! The vain heart must be weaned from these, to follow Christ. If we will indeed follow him, it must be tamed to share with him, in this point of suffering, not only mistakes and misconstructions, but bitter scoffings and reproaches. Why should not our minds ply and fold to this upon that very reason, which he so reasonably presses again and again on his disciples? The servant is not greater than his master. And in reference to this very thing, he adds, If they have called the master Beelzebub, how much more will they speak so of his servants? Matthew 10, 24 and 25. Infer 1. Seeing it is thus, I shall first press upon the followers of Christ, the apostles' rule here, to keep their suffering spotless that it may not be comfortless. Resolve to endure it, but resolve, likewise, that it shall be on your part innocent suffering. Suffer not as evildoers. Besides that the ways of wickedness are most unsuitable to your holy calling, look to the enmity about you, and gain even out of that evil this great good of more circumspect and holy walking. Recollect who you are and where you are, your own weakness and the world's wickedness. This our Savior represents, and upon it gives that suitable rule. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Know you not what exact eyes of others are upon you? Will you not thence learn exactly to eye yourselves and all your ways, and seek of God, with David, to be led in righteousness, because of your enemies, your observers? Psalm 27, 11. This is the rule here, verse 16. Suffer as Christians, holily and blamelessly, that the enemy may not know where to fasten his hold as the wrestlers anointed their bodies, that the hands of their antagonists might not fasten upon them. Thus truly, they that walk and suffer as Christians anointed with the Spirit of Christ, their enemies cannot well fasten their hold upon them. To you, therefore, who love the Lord Jesus, I recommend this especially, to be careful that all your reproaches may be indeed for Christ and not for anything in you unlike to Christ. That there be nothing save the matter of your rod. Keep the quarrel as clean and unmixed as you can, and this will advantage you much, both within and without, in the peace and firmness of your minds, and in the refutation of your enemies. This will make you as a brazen wall, as the Lord speaks to the prophet. They shall fight against you, but shall not prevail. Jeremiah 15.20 Keep far off from all impure, unholy ways. Suffer not as evildoers, 
no, nor as busybodies. Be much at home, settling things at rights within your own breast, where there is so much work and such daily need of diligence, and then you will find no leisure for unnecessary idle pryings into the ways and affairs of others. And further than your calling and the rules of Christian charity engage you, you will not interpose in any matters without you, nor be found proud and censorious, as the world is ready to call you. Shun the appearances of evil. Walk warily and prudently in all things. Be not heady, nor self-willed, no, not in the best thing. Walk not upon the utter brink and hedge of your liberty, for then you shall be in danger of overpassing it. Things that are lawful may be inexpedient, and, in case there is fear of scandal, ought either to be wholly forborne, and, in case there is fear of scandal, or used with much prudence and circumspection. Oh, study in all things to adorn the gospel, and under a sense of your own unskillfulness and folly, beg wisdom from above, that anointing that will teach you all things. Much of that Holy Spirit will lead you in the way of all truth. And then, in that way, whatsoever may befall you, suffer it, and however you may be vilified and reproached. Happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Infer too. But if to be thus reproached is to be happy, then certainly their reproachers are not less unhappy. If on those resteth the spirit of glory and of God, what spirit is in these but the spirit of Satan and of shame and vileness? Who is the basest, most contemptible kind of person in the world? Truly, I think, an avowed contemner and mocker of holiness. Shall any such be found amongst us? I charge you all in the name of Christ that you do not entertain godless prejudices against the people of God. Let not your ears be open to, nor your hearts close with, the calumnies and lies that may be flying abroad of them and their practices. Much less open your mouths against them, or let any disgraceful word be heard from you. And when you meet with undeniable real frailties, know the law of love, and to practice it, Think, this is blameworthy, yet let me not turn it to the reproach of those persons, who, notwithstanding, may be sincere, much less to the reproach of other persons professing religion, and then cast it upon religion itself. My brethren, beware of sharing with the ungodly in this tongue persecution of Christians. There is a day at hand wherein the Lord will make inquiry after these things. If we shall be made accountable for idle words, as we are warned, Matthew 12.36, how much more for bitter, malicious words uttered against any, especially against the saints of God, whom, however the world may reckon, he esteems his precious ones, his treasure. You that now can look on them with a scornful eye, which way shall you look when they shall be beautiful and glorious? and all the ungodly clothed with shame. Oh, do not reproach them, but rather come in and share with them in the way of holiness, and in all the sufferings and reproaches that follow it. For if you partake of their disgraces, you shall share in glory with them in the day of their Lord's appearing.